Howdy, this is Larry Redman, State Forage uh, Specialist with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, bringing you a presentation on how to calibrate a boom sprayer. A lot of people are trying to convert uh, their exotic grass pastures back to native prairie, uh, trying to enhance wildlife habitat, especially for the northern bobwhite. So we need to learn how to ca uh, properly calibrate the boom sprayer. And if we do that, then that will ensure that we get the proper application rate of that herbicide in the pasture. It's going to allow for us to correctly formulate the spray tank mixture and it will provide for the most cost-effective treatment that we can get. Step one in calibrating a boom sprayer is to take a tape measure and simply determine the nozzle spacing between the spray nozzles. Record that uh, number in inches. Step number two, now we determine the length of calibration course. We're going to drive the tractor and the sprayer through a specified length called the calibration course depending on the nozzle spacing. And to determine that calibration course, we go through a little simple math. We'll take the nozzle spacing and divide that by 12 and then divide that number uh, into 340. So if you look at the example there, took the 20 inch nozzle spacing, divide that by 12 inches that gives us 1.67. We then take 340, divide by 1.67, and that gives us a calibration course, uh, course length in this particular example of 204 feet. Uh, your calibration course, of course, uh, could be different, different uh, depending on nozzle spacing on your particular boom sprayer. Step number three, now we measure and stake out the calibration course. You want to do this in the field where you're actually going to be spraying because the field will actually determine the speed that you can uh, drive through that field safely. So once you uh, get your uh, field and uh, drive through the field and determine the safe speed that you can use, then you'll use the PTO RPM speed and you will drive through that calibration course that you have marked off and record how long it takes to actually drive through that course in seconds. Turn the tractor around, come back through the same uh, calibration course, measure that length of time, take an average of the two travel times and use that for determining how much uh, liquid is going to be coming out of the sprayer. Step number four, we're going to park the tractor. We're going to maintain the same RPMs as we did going through the calibration course. Using clean water only, we're now going to turn on the sprayer and pick one of the nozzles take a graduated cylinder and catch the liquid that comes out of that nozzle for the same number of seconds that it took to drive through the calibration course. When we do that, we're going to look and see how many ounces of liquid we actually caught and using this particular method of calibrating uh, the sprayer, the ounces caught equals the gallons per acre that are being delivered uh, to the field. And our target for that is going to be 15 to 20 gallons of liquid per acre. That ensures good coverage. If spraying more than 20 gallons or less than 15 gallons, we need to replace the nozzles so that they will deliver the correct amount. If we are spraying, say, uh, 10 gallons per acre, uh, we do not want to increase the pressure, for example, because this will reduce uh, the droplet size and gives us more potential for off-target drift. And so the correct way is to set that uh, pressure regulator at 20, 25 pounds of pressure and leave it and then adjust the nozzles so that we can deliver more or less liquid. Uh, once we get all of the nozzles uh, checked, we're going to take an average of those and if we have any nozzles that are delivering 5% above or below the average, then we're going to replace those nozzles so that they're all delivering uh, essentially the same amount. And we want to remember that using the correct amount of herbicide is, is important not only to have a cost-effective control, but also because the label is the law.